Hello, my beautiful babies, and welcome to Dune Club Session 5. That's right. We're back on Arrakis for Children of Dune Club Session 5. For this session, Bean says you should have read pages 204 to 254. Do you have anything to say, Beans, before I let you go? <laughs> okay, no, she doesn't have any comment. Um, you need to be reading from this particular book for these uh, page numbers to work. But if you are not reading this book and you are reading a different version of Children of Dune, uh, the last sentence of the last chapter that you need to read to for this session is, that thought reduced the sureness of his knowledge and he ran faster. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, Beans is very profound. No. It's her favorite word. No. Um, so before we get into it, I just want to remind all of you about all of this extremely sexy merch we got. That's right. We've got the Back to School Dune Pack on sale right now at danicaxix.bigcartel.com. Uh, this is my sexiest Dune Pack yet. I've really outdid myself this year. I've been wanting to do this for years. I finally did it, and I feel really good about it. And uh, I know a lot of you online have been... Uh, on Twitter and Instagram, let me know that you got your pack and you're fucking super stoked on it. Thank you for everybody who's uh, been letting me know you got it. So in this pack, you get a signed Bene Gesserit notebook. You get an Abomination Alia bookmark with a uh, foil stamping on the back. You get a Chome sticky notebook. You get a Mintat Juice of Safu vegan lip balm, a Spacing Guild highlighter, a Souk School syringe pen, uh, look at that chome sticky notebook. What a sexy piece of merch. And uh, yeah, and we also have sold separately the Spice Melange CBD Lip Balm. Uh, I love this lip balm. I use it every day. And uh, it tastes like cinnamon. <laughs> a little bit of cinnamon in there. And uh, it comes with a uh, God Emperor bookmark. And then we also still have the Dune Club 2 uh, uh, enamel pins available with the Lit Me Against Fear prayer card. And also some 8x10 uh, Abomination Alia personalized and signed prints are available. And coming up soon, we will also have uh, the Bathwater of Life pendant necklace. But uh, I'm still working on that. So that'll be, that'll be coming soon. So if you want to support this free class, that's one great way to do it. And you can do that at danicaxix.bigcartel.com. Get yourself some sweet merch. All right. Let's get into it. Let's start with a now beans is settled let's start with a recap session five it's go time <laughs> it's go time guys this is like it's all picking up now alia uh continues to lose her grip on the imperium when the fremen tribes unanimously vote to reinstate her mother the lady jessica to the regency council alia hastily recalls duncan from the desert and holds an emergency meeting with him and irulan she then invites her mother to join her morning audience to hear petitioners. Uh, while waiting for Alia to show up, Jessica embarrasses Javid. And, uh, and then once Alia shows up, once they get the procession started, mother and daughter are joined in battle. All right, it's go time, guys. It's go time. Oh, this, I can't wait to talk about this chapter. Uh, as they listen to supplicants before the royal court, Jessica barely escapes a thinly disguised assassination attempt and calls her loyal Fatakine to her aid in fleeing from the Regency. Meanwhile, Leto and Ganima escape Siege Tabar and go into the desert to face off against the Laza Tigers. So it's go time for everybody in this, uh, in this session. This is a really excited, action-packed session we got going on here. So uh, let's see. Let's see. I've, I've already gone to chapter 21 here with our small graphics. Great. Alia calls a meeting with Duncan and Irulan. Um, one of the things, okay, so here's something about Frank Herbert. He doesn't put a lot of descriptions in his book. There's not like a ton of visual descriptions of things, which, uh, you know, so he can let your imagination breathe and like your, your own mind to fill in the gaps. But in this particular uh, chapter, he does put in a few details that I was like, I'm like, anytime he mentions anything visual, I'm like salivating. I'm like, what does it look like? What is it? And in this one, I love that he talks about how when they're at this in this meeting room, they have Alia is striding upon these these giant garnet tiles. And I was like, damn, they've got entire 
tiles on their floor made of garnet. That is the most pimpin' fucking thing I've ever thought of. I would die <laughs> for, for garnet tiles. Like, oh my God, can you imagine? Can you imagine what opulence? Uh, and then they also talk about the divans of gray whale fur. I love whale fur. It's like this is like really bougie shit. Like there's some whales who have hair and they hunt them and then they have fur and then you sell them and they're super fucking expensive. Uh, I love I love all of that. Uh, anytime, anytime he says anything about like how some shit looks or what it's made out of, I'm just like, I'm so there. And I also like that he was going into some fashion too. He starts talking about some fashion. He talks about Duncan Idaho's, uh, he's wearing this Atreides house uniform guard or house card uniform. No insignia though. He's like, I don't give a fuck. He's a Zen Sunni. He's Zen as fuck. You know, like he didn't give a shit about rank and and hierarchies and like putting on this oh i've got these five stars and my color like he don't give a shit okay he just like wears the, the the regular fucking guard uniform which by the way hasn't changed in like they were saying like 1400 years or something like this has like been the same fucking outfit that these motherfuckers have been wearing for like a thousand years you know it's just like i, lo I love and do and that like shit just is like so stable it just doesn't even it's like they don't even change their uniforms they're just like eh, these these are the uniforms if it ain't broke don't fix it uh, and that, and I love that it pisses off all the, all the ladies and Alia's, you know, and Alia's employee. They're like, you need to wear, you're Alia's husband. You need to wear the insignia that says that you're like higher than us. Like what the fuck, you know, like you're messing up everything by not going in the hierarchy, dude. So anyways, moving on to the actual chapter, uh, Alia is pissed that the Fremen tribes have unanimously voted to reinstate Jessica to the Regency Council. Okay, she's been like, she, she does not want her mom on the council. Not going to be good for her. Uh, and Duncan has been recalled because she he was going to do this assassination plot, right? He was out in the desert, like ready to spring that trap. But she recalls him because she's like fucking hysterical. And, uh, and he's like, well, ugh, I hope she didn't recall me because like she heard that the preacher fucking like sent me a message. And the preacher... Uh, he received the secret signal from the preacher used by Paul to summon Duncan Idaho. Remember when he was like, I, the preacher was like, I have but to use my right hand and I can summon Duncan Idaho. Well, he summoned him, you know, and it's like, oh, shit. Like, oh, that's OK. That's popping off. But like Duncan's like, does he is he at Paul? How would he know that? Fuck. So so that's been a thing. Um and uh and she and she starts talking about the preacher although she, she doesn't know that that happened but she's like i want to kill the preacher like fuck that guy and both Irulan and duncan are like mm, you need to be careful lady because like if you do that you're gonna create a martyr and that's gonna be a fucking problem for all of us like we just i, I don't know if that's a good fucking idea and uh, and she's just like i said she's hysterical she's convinced that uh this is all part of some far-reaching fucking plot and uh and so and that, that includes Jessica. Her mother's in on it. Every, she's paranoid. Okay. Like the Baron's making her fucking paranoid. She's freaking out. Alia and Duncan. It's really interesting this chapter too. Alia and Duncan both wonder about Irulan's allegiance. Uh, but the way she argues in this chapter is like opposed to how a conspirator would argue. So earlier, because I was thinking like, oh, because Irulan's like, just accept the Carino gift. So I was like, oh, is she a spy? But like, it's so, it's so well written where you really don't know if she's like on for House Carino or House Atreides. Like it's like the way that Frank Herbert writes her. It's like, man, it could be taken either way. It's so well done. Um, so they start going through the, the list of the usual suspects. They're like, is it the guild? Is it? And they're like, no, because the guild, like, you know, they're parasitic growth. You know, they, they don't they're they're like fedex you know like they, they just want they just want to ship stuff <laughs> like they, they, uh, it was probably not them is it the Bene Gesserit and they're like no they use proxies they don't really do things you know they hide behind people they like they don't you know do these sorts of things by themselves is it chome maybe you know is it chome like hmm that's really interesting and then Alia reveals that she knows that there's been a recent increase in trade for people with Four specific specialities: sword masters, like Duncan, twisted mintats, <laughs> uh, which uh, Piter Devries he was a twisted mintat, Souk school medics, 
so some some Dr. Yui's, except that, that won't fuck you over, and FinCap accountants. And what is a FinCap accountant? FinCap is financial capability. So being financial capable, financially capable means managing money well on the day-to-day, -day, planning and saving for the future, preparing for the future and unexpected events, using credit well but avoiding unmanageable debt. Um, the, a FinCap accountant sees the value in actively managing their money, knows how to make sound money decisions and act on them, and has confidence in their own ability to make decisions about money. So they're, they look for some money people, okay? And so... Ali is like, okay, so if these four types of people are being traded, there's an increase in trade for these four types of skills. Do your thing. Do your thing, human computer. Mint at it for me. So he, he does his mintations. And uh, his prime computation is there has been a recent increase in wealth among the minor houses. So then they're like, oh, is it the lands rod? Like, is it the land? And so the lands rod is kind of like the, the republic uh, so you have the emperor, right? And he's like over shit. But then you have all these planets who kind of form the, the lands rod. So like the emperor is like, yeah, he, he, they're like the check in the balance to the emperor's power. Okay, the lands rad. So it's like made up of all these like little, these little planets, these little houses, uh, houses great and minor. And so they're like, oh shit, the great houses are making alliances. Like they're, they're, they're making some moves in there. Like somebody's making some alliances. And he tells, uh, Duncan tells her, you must inquire closely after any advisory legislation which may be under preparation for the next session of the Landsrad. They might make take the legal position that a regency can't veto certain kinds of legislation, specifically adjustments of taxation and the policing of cartels. And Ali is to this. She's like, well, we can still beat their asses. I got the fucking Fremen. And he's like, lady, like, you, like, careful, Alia. Our enemies would like nothing better than to make us appear monstrous. No matter how many legions you command, power ultimately rides on popular sufferance in an empire as scattered as this one. You know, and she's like, well, Chome knows. Okay, they better not fuck with me because I can destroy the fucking spice if I want to. And, uh, and then they bring up like, well, did somebody like redo the spice cycle? Like, has someone successfully started the spice cycle on another planet? Has someone broken our fucking spice monopoly? And uh, it's like maybe on Seleucia Secundus, Irulan? Like, and Irulan's like, my people have said... It's no, you know, they haven't done that, which is true. They are trying to do the sand trout experiment, but they haven't become successful with it. So even though this may on the surface seem like a lie, it's actually true because they haven't succeeded in doing that. So still, it's like all, Irulan is like, oh, is she a spy? Is she not a spy? Um, is she with the Carinos? What's going on? So, uh, and then, so, like, Alia is getting even more pissed. She finally snaps. She snaps on Duncan. She's like, don't take that tone of voice with me. And, like, for that moment, like, the Baron is just, like, straight up on her face. Like, it's just like, hey, I'm possessed. Like, I'm an abomination. And uh, and Duncan sees it. He's like, oh, my fucking God. You know, like, and then he, I love that he, like, looks at Irulan. Like, he sees it. He's like, <gasps> and then he looks at Irulan. Like, did you see that? And, like, Irulan just acts like, I didn't see anything. You know, maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. She's an idiot. So maybe she didn't see it. Um, but I love that Duncan, like, immediately is like, huh? and then Irulan's just like, whatever. She didn't see it. Um, and so they continue. Um, and then Irulan, Irulan uh, she, she interjects after this outburst. And she says, we never get far from wealth and all of its masks when we deal with power. Paul was a social mutation. And as such, we have to remember that he shifted the old balance of wealth. They know that there are three people who could perpetuate that mutation. The twins and Alia. And I love I love that Irulan is just like, follow the money. Follow the fucking money. Which is like so true. Okay. Like people get so wrapped up in like ideals and like, oh, this person's trying to do this because of this. And oh, wow. Blah, blah, blah. Just, just follow the money. You'll figure out what's really going on. Once you figure out how much money is being made, who's making the money, then people's like the way people their actions will make a lot more fucking sense to you you know it's just like you're like oh that's that's the scam that's the scam like just always follow the money kids um and so alia they come to the fucking agreement they're like alia's like oh my god this is an assassination plot you're right i can uh, they're gonna try to assassinate me um because i can't perpetuate that mutation hello beans you're trying to get in on this again 
Um, and then Idaho's internally, he's like, no, they're not trying. <laughs> they could discredit. They could cancel you too easy. Like, what are you talking about? But then he's like, no, it's the twins. It's the twins that are in danger. And uh, but he's again, he's internalizing all of this. And so Ollie is like, OK, so when, where and what weapons? Hold on. When, where, and what weapons would they use to assassinate me? What do you think, guys? <laughs> so they start brainstorming what they would do. And uh, and then like and then Irulan's finally like, maybe it's a biological weapon. Maybe it's a maybe it's an animal. Maybe it's a fucking animal. And then she's like, she's like, I I stake my fucking dependence on the house ferrets. I love that they have, by the way, house ferrets. They have house ferrets to protect them from dangers. You know, they're like, maybe it's like a snake or like some weird fucking bug or something that's supposed to come in here and fucking bite you and kill you, you know? And she's like, no, the house ferrets to take care of it. Well, what if it is a ferret? What if they put a fucking evil ferret in there? She's like, oh, the house ferrets are trained. They'll fucking tear apart that that alien rogue ferret, you know? And, it's, and I love it. I love that they have fucking house ferrets. Uh, it's so great. And while Irulan and Alia are, are arguing about the house ferrets, Duncan experiences uh, Rajia, the movement of infinity expressed by life, total immersion in mintat awareness. And, um, and so he's like, he's like, oh, fuck. Oh, I, I got it. Something's coming in, guys. Something's coming in here. OK. And he like almost clairvoyantly sees the twins crouched in darkness while these giant claws, you know, are like raking above them. And he just he just knows, you know, he's like, oh, no, it's it's going to be a, it's going to be a big cat. It's going to be like a fucking it's going to be a big fucking animal like the twins. It's going to be the twins and they're and it's going to be a fucking big animal. And uh, and he wants to alert port authorities like he's still not saying he's letting Alia think that it's about her, you know, but he's like, we need to talk port authorities about animals uh and he's and like all he's like you think Irulan's right and he's like no seriously we need to talk about this she's like dude smugglers like go ahead tell the port authorities what about fucking smugglers they're gonna do their fucking thing and uh and so at the end of this meeting Alia raises her raises her fist with a thumb this is like the Fremen fuck you you know this is this is this is the Fremen fuck you and uh essentially this means that I give typhoon conflict I will hurl the death wind at anyone who tries to fuck with me. Uh, she's just, she's fucking so crazy. And like Idaho's thinking, he's like, I wish she was the target. Fuck, I should kill her right now. But then he's like, I can't do it. Fuck. Um, and he thinks to himself, not only was Alia blind in her alien possession, but became more insane with each crisis. She'd already passed her danger point and was doomed. And then he's like, what do I do about the twins, though? Like, I know she's doomed. Like, she's, I can't do anything about this. But, like, the twins, like, what do I do? And he's like, do I talk to Stilgar? Stilgar's already, what, what can Stilgar do more than he's already doing? Nothing. Do I talk to Jessica? I don't know. Is she even for the twins? Is she trying to kill them? I don't fucking know. So he's kind of in this, in this weird, <laughs> in this weird zone. Poor Duncan. Poor Duncan. He's the saddest character in this whole fucking thing. I just, I feel so, I feel so hard for Duncan that poor motherfucker um so let's continue on to our next chapter jessica and javid await alia so jessica has been called to share alia's morning audience uh where and so she's waiting in this giant anteroom where she hates she hates that too she's in the keep she already hates the keep she's in this giant fucking anteroom and she's like fuck this place this place sucks too like i don't like it I don't like these courtiers. I don't like Javid. I don't like waiting here. Why am I even here? I haven't been reinstated. She doesn't know that she's been reinstated to the council yet uh, or that the Fremen have called for her to do that. And so and so while she's waiting, because Ollie is delaying, she's waiting. Javid's like, she looks over at Javid. He's kind of like kind of round face. And she's like, ugh, a well-fed Fremen. You know, what a paradox. What a joke. You know, <laughs> like, what a fucking, what an asshole. And then he looks at her, he sees her looking at her and he just shrugs he's like, whatever you know like whatever like just smiles and shrugs and uh, i love what she says about this she says this is the age of the shrug he knows i've heard all the stories about him and he doesn't care our civilization could well die of indifference within it before succumbing to external attack you know it's just like eh, whatever and i was and i was just like thinking about that and i was like god that's so true today i just feel like the, everyone's just like whatever uh you know, like I, I felt that was a really relatable, really relatable sentiment in uh, in my opinion. 
And then when she doesn't smile back, he coughs. And he coughs in a way that says, we understand the nonsense of all this pomp, my lady. Isn't it wonderful what humans can be made to believe? You know, and she's just like, gives him a blank back. Thinking, wonderful, this fucking asshole. And, um, and she's also thinking to herself, like, man, I've really disturbed the hierarchy here. You know, like, people are staying away from me. They know I'm dangerous. They know Ollie doesn't like me. Uh, Ollie is delaying because she's, like, watching people from the spy hole to, like, see how they're dealing with, like, the fact that Jessica is here. And, uh, and she's thinking about the, her meeting with the Bene Gesserit and how they got her on board to come to Arrakis. And they said to her, you are an adept of the Panoplia Prophetica. You must know when the souring of a powerful religion threatens us all. You know, and it's like, yeah, that's definitely, I mean, she's looking around and she's just like, damn, this is sour as fuck. Like these fucking assholes, this religious government is not, this whack. This is whack. Like, oh my God. And I love too when she's, when it goes back into her meeting with the Bee Gees and she's like, uh, when she's talking to them originally, she, she throws this fucking little barb at them. All proofs inevitably lead to propositions which also have, or which have no proof. All things are known because we want to believe in them. All proofs inevitably lead to propositions which have no proof. All things are known because we want to believe in them. Fuck. I love it. I love it. I think about that all the time. I'm like, you know what? We act like we know everything that's going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, fucking this, that, and the other. And we don't know shit. We don't know shit. We don't know how. It, like, you really get down to it. And, like, we really. You just keep going, you know, with the microscope. You just keep going to the point where you're just like, oh, no. I, I don't. None of this makes sense. Like, none of this fucking makes sense when you get down to, like, quantum physics and all this sort of. You're just like, oh, we don't know shit. This, this could all be a simulation. Like, what the fuck? Um, I, I like to think that all the time. You know, that's the beginning of wisdom is when you know that you don't know shit. Uh, like, we don't know. We really don't. So, anyways, all right, let's move on. So, Javid rolls up to her. And he's, like, got the tea about the preacher's like, oh, have you heard what he's been saying? You know, she's like, I've heard it. I hear, I get reports. You know, like, you'll fucking let Alia know that I fucking get reports. I don't care. Leave that guy alone. I don't give a shit. I'm bored. You're boring me. And uh, he's like, but you should be mad. What the fuck? You know, explain yourself. You should be mad. What? Why aren't you mad about this? And she's like, I love how she's like, perhaps you'd rather I explained how I fit into your schemes. You know, how about how about you'd rather explain how I know how you're trying to use me? How about we do that instead? You know, <laughs> it's like, whoa, fucking Jessica. Um, and then he continues to push her buttons. He's like, I need you to do it. Why won't you officially denounce the preacher? You, you're the mother of Mwadib. You sh this guy is preaching against Mwadib. You should be denouncing this motherfucker. And uh, she's just like, no. <laughs> and the preacher's like, he's like, the preacher said that you are evil. Okay, did you know that? He said that you're evil, and that, but that you wouldn't even turn against him. And here you are, not turning against him. And she's like, you know what? Tell evil, tell Alia that I'm uh, as evil as I am. I will not denounce this man. Okay, I think he's a healthy fucking deal for our empire. He's a healthy sign. Go fuck off. And, uh, and then she's like, be gone. Be gone, shoo, fly, get out of here. <laughs> she she uh, tells him to get the fuck out, and um, and and also too, it's really interesting. So like when they're talking, you know, he mentions Alia a couple times, and she's like, "Oh fuck, I can tell from the way he says her name that they are fucking. The rumors are true. She is fucking Javid, and like, oh my god, like Alia is so self destructive. Like what? I can't believe she's doing all this." And so now, now because the royal mother has, like, denounced Javid and told him to fuck off in front of everybody, all the courtiers are, like, staying away from him. You know, that's what happens in a court. You have all these people that are vying for power, and, like, they do that by, like, sucking up to the ruler, right? So if, like, someone's higher up in the hierarchy boos down somebody else, then that person is like, oh, no, we all got to stay away from him. So that's, that's going on. And, uh, man, Jessica's just disgusted by all this. She's like, fuck, I should have come back sooner. I fucked up. Um, she knew now that she'd lived on faraway Caladan in an insulated capsule, which had allowed only the most blatant of Alia's excesses to intrude. I contributed to my own dream existence. How seductive it is to live in peace. She's beating herself up about it. She's like, shit, this really sucks. I should, I, oh man, I, I fucked up. I should have been here way sooner. And so Alia arrives 
Finally, Alia rolls up, bop, 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 catches her mother's eye, no emotion. But like when these women, when they fucking, oh, when their eyes meet, they both know the battle has been engaged. All right. It's go time. It's go time, baby. Uh, it is go time. And uh, and before they get into it, Jessica thinks about it. She's like, oh, man, I got this fucked up message from Duncan saying like danger, you know, must see you. What does that mean? Fuck, you know, but she's like, it's too late. We're doing this. We're going in right now. And so now we've got chapter 23, uh, Jessica versus Alia. It's go time. So they've set up two thrones, identical thrones. Alia is sitting on the right, the masculine position. So it's like they're, 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 these two women are fighting over hierarchy. You've got divided. <laughs> if, you, if you were in war club, you'll know that uh, having uh, a divided uh, the top. You can't have a divided. What is it? Power structure. I guess I guess that's the best way to say it. That's bad. Okay, so here we have this divided power structure who's fighting amongst itself. Nobody knows. It's like, is the mother of Muad'Dib, is she in charge or is it Alia? Like, which one? Which one? So even though both of their thrones are identical and sitting next to each other, Alia gets the upper hand by putting herself on the right, which is the masculine, which is where, like, the king sits, which, like, the king is thought to be above the queen. So that's, like, how she tries to one-up her mom. This is just, like, a whole game of one-ups. They're just trying to one-up each other this whole fucking chapter. And so their first guy... Yeah, house divided. Yes, divided leadership. Yes, thank you, guys. Uh, <laughs> a house divided falls, and it is true. So their first guy is up. It is literally a Game of Thrones. That's right, Davy. It really is. Their first, their first guy comes up. Their first sup supplicant. This guy named uh, Tagir Mohandas. He is a sexy Kadeshian troubadour. He plays the Balisette. and uh, Ali is like, you know what? I'll give the first judgment to you, Mom. You know why? Why don't? Why don't you go? Well, I'll give you the first judgment. And she's like, thank you, daughter. So, like, that's, like, Jessica. So, like, Ollie did the throne thing. So now Jessica comes and goes, thank you, daughter. You're below me because you're my daughter. <laughs> so that was, like, the second one, the second burn. Um, and so this guy, he needs gas money, all right? He uh, he wants to go to Seleucus Secundus. Uh, because he hears that Faradin is supporting the arts. He's got a renaissance of, like, troubadours and artists around him. He's got a poppin'-ass court. And when he got here, he got drugged. Some some Fremens, like, stole his purse, you know, cut his purse. And so he's just trying to get some passage to uh, to the next place. And he's like, and I play as well as Gurney, you know. As I, I love how he's just so, like, just so much machismo, you know. Like, just, just so much gravitas. When they're like, oh, well, will you play for your passage? He's like, oh, yeah. Oh, I can play as well as Gurney. And it's like, oh, this bitch, like, literally listens to Gurney play his balisette. So, like, that's a bold fucking statement, man. And uh, she's like, okay, well, play a song. I, we're going to do this on Fremen terms. If I love it, I'm going to keep you here with me because you're great. If I hate it, I'm going to make you go into the desert to work for your passage. And if it's just right, I'm going to send you to Faradin. So get going. So he starts singing this shit talking song. He starts he starts fucking talking shit about the Atreides with his fucking song. And uh, and like like about the, the Atreides coming to Arrakis and like fucking it all up. And then at the end, he calls Alia the cone teen. And it's like, oh, I love God damn it. I love the cone teen. Uh, that's such a such a diss in Fremen culture. This is the female death spirit who walks without feet. She just floats, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like a horror movie. The cone teen is like a Fremen horror movie fucking trope, you know? And, uh, and Alia pretends, I mean, Alia set this whole thing up, but she's pretending to be pissed. And, uh, and she's like, what the, f you better shut the fuck up. You can't call me cone teen. And, uh, I started calling beans, the cone, the cone teen. I was like, beans, the cone teen. <laughs> um, but Jessica plays along, Jessica plays along. And she's like, I find this one a fitting gift for Farad. And he has a tongue, which cuts like a Chris knife, such bloodletting as that tongue could administer would be healthy for our own court. We could use this guy around here. Uh, but I'd rather he ministered to the house Karina, which is like, oh, such a fucking pimp baller thing to say. And uh, Ollie's like, but he called me the cone teen. You gonna let you gonna let that slide? You gonna let the preacher slide? You are gonna let this cone teen thing slide? So she's trying to discredit her mother. She's trying to get her mother canceled. And she's like, he didn't call you anything, daughter, but reported that that which he or anyone else could hear in the streets, where they call you cone teen. And if you put away those who report accurately, you'll keep only those who know what you want to hear. I can think of nothing more poisonous than to rot in the stink of your own 
reflections burn roasted Alia just got roasted in front of the whole fucking court like and the audience is like oh, what like they are freaking out um and so while everyone's freaking out jessica looks at this fucking troubadour who's hanging out and she's like man he acted with confidence of his own judgment but accepted whatever befell him even death without berating his fate like this man is bold as fuck and she's like this is exactly somebody that lita would hire like i, I want this man I want this man in my fucking deal. But she knows that like they would also predict that. So she's like, hey, hey, everybody shut up. Hey, why did you sing those words? And he said, I heard that the Atreides were honorable and open minded. And I thought to test it and perhaps stay here in your service, thereby having the time to seek out those who robbed me and deal with them uh, in my own way. You know, and it's just like, oh, shit, he just came here for the lulls. Like he doesn't give a fuck. He's just looking for another adventure. This man's just looking for another adventure. And, uh, and, and like, she's like, well, Jessica's like, fuck, I really want to keep him. Like, he's so cute. Like, I just want to keep this guy. But I know Ollie is going to, like, fucking kill him if I keep him. So I guess I'll send him to Faradin's court. But I'm really sad that I have to send this amazing creature to Faradin. And uh, so she, she's, she's like, you know what? I'll send you to Faradin. You got your passage, dude. You win, you know? A plus, A plus, motherfucker. And Alia is like, did not expect this decision, which also signals to Alia that she really is abomination because she's like, I'm in her head. Like, she's part me. So, like, she should know what I would do, but she didn't expect this. So, like, she really is possessed by, like, one other figure if she's not able to hear me in her head like that. So, next up, I know Tagir Mohan just needs his own book. He does, Dean Reader. He does um he's so good i would love to have more of that guy uh so next up we have uh guardian al fali a fade keen he's a nabe uh and he brings a matter of the desert okay and he lied to the people uh the the priesthood like he wasn't he didn't say i'm bringing a fucking matter of the desert he told him it was some other shit there's this big hubbub they're like oh you can't listen to this guy this guy this is guy this is not tell us that he was bringing us this sort of shit and um and while all this, like, interruption is going on, Jessica sees that Alia does the little Atreides hand signal for now, you know. And uh, she immediately lurches to the left, takes the throne with her, dives into the audience. A fucking priest with a Mala pistol tries to shoot her, you know. It's, like, just in time. Like, the, the bullet goes through her sleeve. And, uh, and so she was, like, and Alia didn't even move. Like, Alia doesn't even move, which is, like, oh, she, she obviously, I mean, not only did she see her do the hand signal... She didn't even move. So she obviously knows that this is going to happen and she doesn't even have to move because the, the pistol is not going to, it's not meant for her. Um, and so, uh, and so Al Fali though, he thinks that that guy was trying to kill him. You know, he thinks that the, the bullet was meant for him. So he goes up to this fucking priest, smashes his larynx. The guy's like on the ground fucking, he's like on the ground, like, like can't breathe. He's going to die soon. Jessica's like, no, we need that guy. And tell, she uses the voice on these courtiers. And she's like, go save that man or you're fucking, if he dies, you die. Go fucking save him. They like rush off to go save him. Uh, but then before they can do so, another courtier comes in and finishes him off. Like just fit in. And it's like, oh, this guy died. Sorry, guys. He's asphy asphyxiated. He died. So fuck you. Um, and she's like, damn, like, this is fucked up. Like, they just tried to kill me in front of everybody. Like, what the fuck? And then they straighten the thrones up and Ollie's like, come on, back up here. Come on, mom, let's keep going. And it's like, oh, fuck. Um, and so then they start arguing in front of the whole court. Uh, Jessica can't take it anymore. And, uh, she's like, well, hey, where, where are those, uh, where's that pistol at? Ollie's like, it's gone. Sorry. And she's like, I need to see that pistol. Where is it? She's like, nope, sorry. You can't, can't see it. Where are those courtiers? I told them that if that guy was going to die, they were going to die. So he died. So they're dead. And Ollie's like, no, why? I, you can't fucking do that. Uh, and then she's like, okay, fine, whatever. Back to Alphali, dude. Uh, what, what do you got for me? You know, we'll save this for later. We'll shelve this fucking for later. And uh, he goes, I come to see the mother of Muad'Dib. Uh, we pooled all our, our Fremen knaves. We pooled our money to get us here to buy my way in past the avaricious guardians who shield the Atreides from the realities of Arrakis. You know, and Alia tries to interfere. Jessica's like, shut up, you murderous abomination. You fucking abomination in front of everybody. Uh, Alia's frozen. You know, she's like, oh, oh, no, fuck. Like, she just said it in front of everybody in the court. And then, like, unconsciously starts doing this, like, hand tapping thing that the Baron would do. And Jessica fucking sees it and is like, 
oh no not only is she possessed she's possessed by the motherfucking baron like oh my fucking god like oh no oh no and um uh, and then Alia sees that she knows, you know, Alia knows that she knows. And, uh, and then I love, and I love that she's like, oh, so you've come to take your fucking vengeance on us. I see, I see what's going on here, bitch. And Alia's like, uh, have you gone, have you gone mad, mother? Starts gaslighting her. I love that the Baron starts gaslighting her. He's like, have you gone mad? You're, you're crazy, mom. You know, it's just like, you fucking gaslighting piece of shit. You know, like, oh, the fucking worst. And, um. Uh, and so now that Alia knows that she definitely knows, Alia knows now that Jessica will absolutely tell the Bene Gesserit sisterhood and will absolutely probably tell the Fremen and get her ass on the trial of possession, you know, get tried for being a fucking crazy witch, you know, like, and like, it's not going to go well for her. So she knows that Alia can't let her leave this room alive. She cannot let her leave this room alive. And uh, they go back to all folly. Awfully, he's like, hey, guys, the worms are dying. But okay, bye. What about me? Hey, I'm here. Uh, I know you guys are fighting, but like the worms are dying. Okay, there's too much water here. We don't see the little makers are fucking gone. The sound trout are fucking. It's not good. Like you can only find Shai Hulud in the deep desert. Like this is a problem. This is a fucking problem. All yeah, again, it's like this is superstitious. Don't listen to him. Shut up. And then Jessica again calls her the fuck out and is like, the worms go. The spice goes. Our wealth goes. Our power goes, guys. Like I see what you're saying. This is a fucking problem. Uh, you're fucking right. And I also love how Alpha Lee calls her the mother of moisture. You know, he's like, oh, I come to speak to the mother of moisture. You know, not to the cone teen. Not to the fucking cone. Oh, beans popped up right when I said cone teen. Did you call me, mom? Did you call me? This is a lucky day. We've had three beans, bean cone teen sightings in one dune club. It's the, um, the female death cat that walks who moves without paws <laughs> but yeah they're like we need these damn worms this is a fucking problem and then like while she's thinking about it jessica's like she goes into like the adab you know she goes in that adab shit where it's kind of like it's kind of like when duncan went into his thing you know like when duncan was like oh my god i clairvoyantly like see this shit i don't know how i know this but just i just fucking know this with like subconsciously something's happening like i can just fucking see this the same similar thing happens to um, to our mother of moisture, and uh, and she's like, like um, <laughs> she is um, she's like Alia is lying. It's like why is Alia lying about this? Alia is lying because she's possessed by somebody who would destroy the Atreides. And if you destroy the spice monopoly, you destroy the spice. You're destroying the Atreides. So and like this is all happening in slow motion in her mind. And then like she like comes to this realization. She looks around. She sees the crowd. She's like shuffling. Like okay, I see a path out of here. Or, like I see this is the path I need to take. Okay, and um, then she goes into action. And this this all takes place in like a fraction of a second. It's really interesting. Frank Herbert actually talked about a time when he was working on some working on something uh, and there was like some dangerous. I, I don't know whether it was a blade or, or some shit, but he was working with it with a tool. The tool went sideways or whatever the fuck. Something weird happened with it. He had a moment where it's like, oh, I'm going to fucking get killed right now or lose a finger or something like he was in like a moment where it's like, oh, this is really dangerous. Like this has gone really, really badly for me. And then he said that in that moment, like time slowed down for him and he was like, oh, and then like, you know, like used everything in his brain to like stop the situation from happening to where he didn't lose a finger or die or whatever it was and that he was like totally fine. So I think that's really interesting, like how that thing that happened to him and it happens to all of us, too. It's like when like something's happening and like time slows down you're like oh no i'm gonna die how do i get out you know how do, how do i fucking dodge this holy shit um so anyways so she calls out she's like she's like uh all folly is right this ecological transformation is out of hand it's out of control ollie is loving it she laughs alone at night in compl in contemplation of her own evil spice production will fall to nothing and when, when word gets out about this, Alia breaks in. We'll have a corner on the most priceless product in the universe. She's like, we'll have a corner on hell. This is a bad idea. Like, what are you doing? And in the private language, Alia says, now you know, mother. Do you think a granddaughter of Baron Harkonnen would not appreciate all the lifetimes you crushed into my awareness before I was even born? When I raged against what you'd done to me, I had only to ask myself what the Baron would have done. And he answered, understand me, Atreides, 
bitch. He answered me. And it's just like, whoa, like cards are on the table now. Like the, the court couldn't figure it out because they're speaking their secret la secret language. But it was crazy. So she, Jessica's like, I'm out. Fuck this. Fade Keen. Hi, Fade Keen. Follow me. We got to get out of here. Six guys show up. They have like fucking have her back. And then they're like exiting, helping her exit. Uh, they show up and they show out and they get the fuck out of there. So that woof. Man, that was a crazy chapter. That was a crazy. I was like, damn, damn, damn. Like, every, every, I was just, like freaking out the whole chapter. It's so good. Um, so let's go now to chapter 24, the twins versus the tigers. It's go time. So not only are Jessica and Alia up against one another, the twins, it is now their time to go against the tigers. And this chapter starts with a really fantastic quote that I would like to share with you guys. One of the best Dune quotes. When I am weaker than you, I ask for freedom because that is according to your principles. When I am stronger than you, I take away your freedom because that is according to my principles. Ooh, that's so good. Man, you look around right now and it's like, yep. Yep, I see motherfuckers like that all around me right now. Like, this is no good. Apparently, this was um, originally an idea that was put forth by this French newspaper man named Louis Velieu. I think that's how you say it. And uh, and yeah, oh, man, cutthroat shit. And it's like this is this this sentence is talking about uh, this guy summed it up on this guy liter literius summed it up on reddit really nicely uh, he's explaining the tactics of extremists who are happy to use the freedoms of democratic system i.e free speech but at the same time would get rid of them if they get the power you know it's just like oh yeah oh yeah i just see a lot of fascist bullshit right now you know we're just like oh totally like people that are like oh yeah like i'm gonna use this free speech but the minute i get in power i'm gonna take away all that free speech and you're just like oh that's not good free speech is free speech man you can't fucking mess with it dude it's like it's not good whoa whoa so it's totally i love it so let's just let's just let's just think about it again these, these are real facts here. When I am weaker than you, I ask you for freedom because that is according to your principles. When I am stronger than you, I take away your freedom because that is according to my principles. So be wary, guys. Be wary. There are those that would like to get into power to take away your fucking freedoms. So uh, and use these beautiful freedoms that we have to all of our detriment. I love it. It's so great. <laughs> so great. It's like, thank you, Dune. Thank you. Thank you, Frank Herbert, for finding this obscure quote from this obscure man and putting it into the fucking public consciousness. It's so perfect. Um, so perfect. Yeah, Charlie Drama, you can't pick and choose when you want to be open-minded. Totally. Totally. I was, uh, <laughs> I actually talked shit earlier this week. I was at a, a juice, a juice place and it says, welcome to all, you know, their sign at their, on their front door said, welcome to all, all, you know, nations and sexual orientations and colors and blah, blah, blah. And then it was like, but we do not serve racist, homophobes, uh, misogynists and uh, assholes. And it was just like, well, then you're not really welcome to all then, are you? Like, then it's not really welcome to all. I mean, you have that right if you don't want to serve people. But then again, it's like, how would you know someone's that when they walk in the door even? Like, how, do you put them under the trial of the asshole, the trial of possession for assholes or misogynists or racists? Like, how do you, how do you even know if someone's like that when they're walking in the door, first of all? And second of all, then you're really not welcome to all, are you? <laughs> like, then that first sentence that you just said is like totally bullshit uh because you're not welcome you're not welcoming everyone asshole especially assholes it's like man i know a lot of assholes like i i've got a lot of asshole family members I, i'm friends with a lot of assholes like it's just like oh assholes are people too maybe they want some juice like i don't fucking know uh, but I was just dying. I was like, people don't even read the shit that they're writing. It's like, this is the most contradictory bullshit I've ever seen. Like, I'll still buy your juice, whatever. But like, you guys need to like, like think about what you're writing, you know? And I just see that so much these days where people are like, I'm so open-minded, but fuck you if you believe this. And you're like, well, then you're not open-minded, are you? 
I mean, that's fine. You can you can think whatever you want. You can not like whoever you want. I get it. Like, I'm not saying whatever, but like, ugh, don't don't act like you're so fucking open minded if you don't want to serve an asshole. <laughs> like, I don't know. Sometimes I could be an asshole. I don't know, man. Do I not get fucking? How do I not? Do I not get juice now? Like, get out of here. Anyways, I know that's a total. I know it's a. I know it's the dark age of critical thinking. I know Nitronic. It's just like they. Know, they really don't see the irony. And you know, like I'm just like, how do you not see this, guys? Like this is fucked up. But anyways, um. So okay. So here we go. Uh. Let's let's a little tangent here. Let's get back on. Let's get back on. Uh. It's go time for Leto and Ganima according to Leto's dreams. So they sneak out into the orchard in disguise because the children, you know, they collect the fruit. So they're like, okay, we're going to act like we're fruit children. And then they bring their new death clothes with them. They're fucking Farad and death shrouds. Um, except Ganima. I love that Ganima sewed we share, their personal motto, we share over the breast. There's like a little Atreides hawk head. And then she like, I love that. It's so cute. Again, I'm like, anytime there's any sort of description of anyone's clothes, I'm like, what is it? Oh, I love it. Um, and they pass an old style Fremen group, music group on their way out. I love that he decided to put in that there are human skin drums. Fremens have human skin drums because there aren't animals that have skins that large besides humans. But nobody really asked that question. Like they have human skin drums, but nobody really talks about it. I love that little that little detail in there. But uh, they go uh, to this kanat and they, they swim through it. They go through this tunnel. And then they get to the end of it and they pop up and they change into their new robes, uh, their new death robes. And they hit the open desert and go to the attendant, the rock. And uh, they are strapped with a Chris knife, Mala pistols and Frem kits. And so um, while they hit the attendant, they're preparing for the attack that they've surmised will come from predatory animals. So like Lido knows they're supposed to be here, but he doesn't know exactly how it's all going to go down. And so they're like, oh, I think it's going to be a predatory animal. And Ghani was like, I think it's going to be two. <laughs> like, I think it's going to be two. Um, and so uh, Lido reflects he knew it would be either he knew it would either be death or the play of death himself. The object Ghanima would be the one to return believing the reality of death she had seen uh, or reporting sincerely from a deep hypnotic compulsion that her brother was indeed slain this is the correct path we do the right thing but he <laughs> but he knew but he knew how dangerous it was to be right in this universe so he's like oh shit like it's on we're doing this they start hiking down to the place where Leto pointed out to Stilgar if I'm dead like there's blood over here like I'm fucking dead so they start hiking down there, and that's when they see the tigers coming. They're like, oh, no, it's fucking lots of tigers. Like, fuck. And so they start running. And uh, Leto felt that he had stumbled into this place to free himself from his soul. He ran with the sure knowledge that he – there's another tiger coming. This this is a lucky – this is a lucky be – she's like, you're talking about tigers now? You're talking about cone teens, and now you're talking about tigers? Oh, my gosh. You can't stay away today. Normally, she's like, fuck you guys in your doom club. But today, she's just like, oh, I'm talking about tigers attacking, huh? I know all about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Leto felt that he had stumbled into this place to free himself from his soul. He ran with the sure knowledge that he and Ganima could reach their narrow notch in time. But his gaze kept returning with fascination to the oncoming beasts. One stumble and we're lost he thought, and that thought reduced the sureness of his knowledge, and he ran faster. So, I know she totally did. She totally did hear a tiger. She's like, what? You're talking about big cats? I'm big cat. <laughs> it's like, no, you're a little cat. Um, she's like, so that's what you think. Um, so that's it for session five of Dune Club. What a blessed Beans session. Wow. Thank you, Beans, for blessing us with your moisture today. Uh, for Children of Dune Club session six, you're going to read from page 255 to page 298 in this book. And then, uh, the if you're not reading in this book, the last sentence of the last chapter you need to read to uh, is, He is dead. He is dead. So that's the last sentence you need to look out for. Um, so, yes. So exciting. Oh, my gosh, guys. Thank you so much for coming with me back to Arrakis today on this beautiful fucking Sunday. Uh, and now we are going to take a quick break, but when we come back, it's question and answer time here on Twitch. First, we're going to talk 
to our uh, take our Patreon questions, and then we're going to take some questions from you lovely people in the Twitch chat. So we will be right back. 19 Academy thanks these lovely people for all their generosity and support on patreon.com slash Danica XIX. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, ring the bell, and tell your friends. You can join me live on twitch.tv slash Danica XIX and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Danica XIX. Support for 19 Academy comes from viewers like you on patreon.com slash Danica XIX.